My master waits for you in the Mournhold Tribunal Temple. A word of advice. Don't keep him waiting for long. Only the most powerful mage in Tamriel. Lord Fear has walked the roads of Nern for millennia, plumbing the deepest mysteries of the Orbis. He strides between Mundus and Oblivion with ease. Daedric princes tremble at the mere mention of his name. It's not my place to question his decisions. He ordered me to find you, and I obeyed. Lord Fear values diverse perspectives, but he has few mortal peers, so he often breaks bread with unusual people. Perhaps you strike him as unusual. Please, listen to me for just a moment. It's very important. Gus. You've arrived. I am Devaith Fear, Wizard Lord of Telfear. I trust no further introduction is necessary. I seek a Daedric artifact. It lies hidden in a brass city filled with danger, curiosity, and contradiction. You will accompany me, if you wish. A voyage that only a few have ever undertaken. We will travel to Sotha Seal's peculiar experiment. The Clockwork City. I have inquiries to make. You will assist me. I do. The Tribunes are not so clever that they could hide such a place from me for long. The city is quite close, and also very far away. Just the first of Sotha Seal's many paradoxes. If you choose to join me, be prepared for many more. You saved the life of a living god. Yes, I know all about your service to Vivek, and your conflict with Clavicus Vile. Foiling the plans of a Daedric Prince is no mean feat. I can think of no better companion for my journey to the Clockwork City. Of course you will. Naturally, you have questions. Alas, they will have to wait. Servants of the Tribunal do not look kindly on blasphemous journeys like this one. Meet me at the waterfall north of the city. Discuss the details there. Prepare if you must, but make it quick. Time is not on our side.
My companion arrives at last. Now then, our journey begins in this dreary little cave. Quite a surprise, yes? Believe me, it won't be the last. We can speak freely here, but do make it brief. All this natural splendor is just tedious. Sofa Seal hides everything. But more to your point, it's not just a city. It's an incomprehensibly powerful world-shaping device. You can't leave that sort of thing lying about, can you? Also, Alma Alexia worries about how it reflects on her divinity. Yes, Seal's fellow tribute. A machine can be studied, and perhaps understood in time. She fears that by reducing their divinity to a machine, Sotha Seal lessens the mystique of their godhood. To his great credit, Seal largely ignores these concerns. A Daedric artifact. I take a keen interest in all such objects, but this one seems especially significant. You see, nearly everyone who searches for it winds up dead. I suspect that someone or something hid this artifact away in the clockwork city. Other people are not to make fear. I've not lived this long by shying away from dangerous relics. Anyway, if this artifact inspired someone to slaughter scores of mages, it's clearly something worth investigating. Sotha Seal always did admire dwarven industry, albeit quietly. Perhaps that's why he built his city here. This lift will take us to the nethermost depths of the ruin. go, the entrance lies just ahead. Do you see, just across the ravine, that's our door. Touch the sphere. Clockwork City awaits. What? This is not the Brass Fortress. Someone diverted our passage. Audacious, but foolhardy. When I find them, I... I 
Back totems! They're activating! Ready your weapons! I will assist you as best I can! I'm in no condition to navigate this maze. Go. Find a way to deactivate these traps. Perhaps I failed to impress the gravity of our situation upon you. If my shadow gets away, we may never escape this place. So if you have something to say, say it quickly. Yes. And perhaps something more. In removing my shadow, our attacker removed some vital part of my animus. My soul, in the common parlance. Without it, my power is severely diminished. Needless to say, this, this will not do. This may surprise you, but I've never had my shadow ripped from my body. Even so, I will devise a solution. Don't trouble yourself with the finer details. Just be prepared to fight. Much will depend on your ability. Do not fail me. Not yet. We should have translocated directly to the Brass Fortress, Seal's chief municipality here in the Clockwork City. But somehow we ended up here, vexing. Yeah, one step at a time, if you please. We need only to find a landmark or map or something. Once I determine where we are, it won't take long to find an exit. Just leave that to me. You focus on these traps.
by spinning knives is not an epitaph worthy of the thing here. Now, onward. I'm eager to see what new wind-up absurdities await us. Sotha Seal constructs his clockwork servitors here, the factotums. They reject anyone who doesn't belong. Someone meant for us to die here. Remedial spellcraft is all I can muster, but I will aid you as best I can. Lead on. Searching area.
you miss a thing, it tries to kill you. More ridiculous machines? I've had enough of this. Come. We still have a long way to go. City. Finally. Sotha Seal's brass fortress waits at the end of this road. We should go there at once. I'm keen to find out who sent us on that delightful journey.
arrived. Good. Debate fear. I warned you never to come back. And you, one of fear's lackeys, I take it. Luciana Pullo. Hospitable as ever? Go talk to her. I'll not waste my time speaking with a petulant toy soldier. Hold there, friend of fear. I am Proctor Luciana Pulo of the Clockwork Apostles. I don't know how you and this egomaniac breached Lord Seth's Celestia drone, but I won't have non-citizens stirring up mischief in the Brass Fortress. Only just arrived and already trying to grease the gears? New arrivals must secure an endorsement from a citizen in good standing. I'm prepared to overlook your atrocious choice in companions if you can find a sponsor. Until then, you are tarnished. That's for you to find out. Not many citizens will risk their reputation on a green-heeled stranger, and you'll find no comfort from me. Maybe you should confer with the other tarnished over there. In the meantime, obey the law. I'll be watching. Tread carefully, Fear. I'll be watching. Lushana clearly hasn't lost her charming demeanor. Predictable. Ah, yes. Their bizarre sponsorship custom. I forgot about that little wrinkle. As a friend and peer of Sotha Seal, I come and go as I please. I suppose it would be best for you to wait out here. If I need you again, I will find you. I'm not a citizen. And even if I were, I'd not waste time wading through their opaque bureaucracy. You've proven yourself to be more than capable. I have no doubt you'll figure something out. Gain your sponsorship. We'll speak again soon. I appreciate your assistance in the Pneumatic Forge, but for now, our paths must diverge. The artifact we seek will not remain in one place for long. I can ill afford a delay. Navigate this absurd ritual quickly, and I will find you again afterward. One of Sotha Seal's greater lackeys, Chief Proctor of the Clockwork Apostles. You might have noticed some mild cosmetic flaws. Honestly, I think she's more automaton than flesh and blood. She certainly acts the part. Seal takes all kinds. Imperials, Bretons, even Argonians. Luciana may be one of his oldest servants. She served Emperor Riemann Cyrodiil as a battle mage in her younger years. Made quite a name for herself during the Akaviri invasion. According to the legend, she was caught in a torrent of arcane energy during a battle with a rival mage. It mangled her body and sent her hurtling through the veil. She eventually crashed here. Seal found her shortly thereafter and mended her wounds. Indeed. At first, I thought she served him out of some cheap obligation. Reciprocity for his kindness. Apparently, she really believes in this place. I heard they had a bit of a falling out. She still serves him, though, in her dog-like fashion. People like her rarely are. You see, I present a destabilizing influence. I reject all illusions of authority and thus reject their entire way of life. Hierarchy, ritual, reverence, it's all a sham. I respect power, not absurd social constructs. Yes, a monastic order of sorts. They serve Sotha Seal through magical inquiry. Apostles fancy themselves iconoclasts who push the boundaries of magical praxis. There's a seed of truth there, I suppose, but they're still obnoxious. <laughs> you mean, are they all half-metal monstrosities? <laughs> More or less. 
Some modify themselves more than others. It's a form of reverence. They want to be more like Sotha Seal. You see, Seal has some peculiar... Well, I'll let you see for yourself. Seal has many names. Sotha Seal, Set, Sea, the Clockwork God, on and on. Tiresome, if you ask me. The Clockwork Apostles mostly refer to him as Set, his verse and sermon name. I call him Seal, because I'm not a doe-eyed idiot. Prices are final. No negotiations. Have you seen the statue of Lord Set in the square? Isn't it just so... gleaming? How glorious to be watched over by such a handsome god. Find a way out of this wasteland, with or without the help of those clockwork apostles. dare you come it. Your mother wanted a better future for you. Because a fact totem with delusions of grandeur told her fortune. Do you really believe that? 
She believed it. Why can't you see? See what? That following the predictions of a deluded machine got my mother killed? I'll prove the prognosticator. That display of emotion isn't indicative of the people of Slagtown. Kamid lost his mother in the last pilgrimage, and that's made him angry at the world. He has a point, though. Dreams and prophecies can be dangerous things. Once every season, the most brave and desperate members of our community make the journey to request a fortune from the Grand Prognosticator. Not everyone receives a prediction, but many have died hoping to have their destinies changed. An oracle of sorts. It's an unusual factotum with a penchant for the mystical and the dramatic. I fear Kamid plans to do something foolish and dangerous. Perhaps you'd be willing to go to the outlaw's refuge and talk to him? Keep him safe? Thank you, my friend. My old bones aren't up to another adventure, but I owe it to Kamid's mother to do whatever I can to keep him safe. The Grand Prognosticator spits out fortunes the way a sawmill spits out lumber. All the same until one isn't. More or less. Something about abject poverty and a miserable existence. But every once in a great while, the Factotum provides a different prophecy. I received such a fortune when I made my pilgrimage so many years ago. A fortune of hope, of riches beyond my wildest dreams. It spoke of a way to escape this life, but I wasn't brave enough to heed the prognosticator's words. Kamid calls the Oracle a fraud. Maybe so, but even a cracked egg sometimes contains a scrape. Find another beggar to bother. I've got more important things to do than carry some apostle's hopeful sack of dirty laundry. Paul Batten's an old fool and a coward. He knows that the prognosticator provides nothing but false hope and dangerous dreams to our people. That's what got my mother killed. I swore I'd never let another person get caught up in its games. Prove that the prognosticator is a liar and a fraud. It tells them over and over again how terrible life is. And then once every generation, it provides an actual fortune to keep them coming back. So I'm going to the Vale of Tears to destroy it. You want to help? I won't refuse, though I don't have anything to give you. That's what you're after. The Vale of Tears lies to the southwest. If you really want to help, meet me there. I've never gone on a pilgrimage, but I've heard tales. The poor and weak will continue to be poor and weak. We'll live a miserable existence and then die from hunger or sickness. Cheerful, right? Makes you wonder why we keep asking the question. Because every once in a great while it actually spits out a different prediction. Something about finding a lost treasure and attaining enough wealth to change the course of your destiny something close enough to that to get everyone excited. Of course I believe that. Why else would I want to prove the prognosticator wrong? I want to show everyone that we can make our own futures. 
We can shape our own destinies, despite what some malfunctioning factotum has to say. If I knew my way around a gear or two, I might have been one of the lucky ones. Talk to me! Say something, damn it! The prognosticator refuses to talk to me. I request a fortune and receive only silence. Is that what my mother died for? I will destroy the false prophet, but not by taking a hammer to its shell. Instead, I'll show my people that it isn't infallible. I'll destroy it by proving that the predictions it makes are blatant lies. To do this, we have to activate the machine. As part of every pilgrimage, the faithful have to descend into the Vale of Tears and secure a working animo core from one of the factotums that roam the area. Head down there and see if any of them have a working power source. I... No, I can't. My mother's body is down there somewhere. If I were to find it, I'd lose my resolve and I wouldn't be able to finish what I've started. If you need my help, use this whistle. I'll do what I can from up here to assist you. Be careful in the Vale. It's dangerous down there.
Reflecting. Reflecting. Memory engaged. Gathering data. The Grass Fortress. Beginning evaluation and analysis. By set's will, please state your query. Dreaming. Squid jelly. A rainy day. I am a first-generation analysis model factotum, specializing in gathering and analyzing data for and about the citizens of the Brass Fortress. My gears continue to spin true. We count the number of people residing within the Brass Fortress, tracking births, deaths, illnesses, relative wealth, and poverty, all with the purpose of evaluating and predicting social trends and growth within Lord Set's creation. Intriguing query. That is one interpretation of our analytical capability. The ongoing purpose of collecting and analyzing such information is to provide Sotha Seal with the data he needs to improve the lives of his subjects. Query. Reflecting. Reflecting. That information is currently unavailable. Please return to the Brass Fortress and seek out a Clockwork Apostle for further assistance in this matter. Beginning analysis to chart possible outcomes. No relevant data in memory vaults. Error. Error. No pronouncements can be furnished without statistics to analyze. Please present yourself to a Clockwork Apostle for immediate data collection.
able to find an animo core? I see you've brought back an animo core. It works, I assume. Good job. While you were gone, I figured out where to install the core. There's a cavity in the machine that looks to be about the right size. I think it goes in there. I'm not sure. I never went on a pilgrimage, so I've never seen the Grand Prognosticator in operation. My mother told me a few stories. She was always vague about the Oracle. Speaking of my mother, did you find anything else down there? How did you know? Oh, you found her. I didn't want to imagine what happened to her, but after seeing what you went through down there... Wait, how did you learn my mother's name if you just found her body? Let me see that. A passphrase? My mother never mentioned anything about a passphrase. I wonder what she hoped to learn by talking to an obsolete factotum. I remember something about a sacred text, though. I'll ask Palbatan about it later. Prognosticator, tell me what the fates have in store for Comet of Slagtown. Reflecting. Charting possible outcomes. Comet of Slagtown. Minimum income. Inferior quality of life. Great, you know all about me. But what does it mean? What's my future, you stupid construct? Query. Reflecting. Prognostication unsatisfactory. Poor quality of life will lead to sickness, starvation, depression, and ultimately, death. Perfectly dire. Just what I expected. And what about my friend here? Reflecting. Reflecting. No relevant data in memory vaults. Error occurred. Please present yourself for immediate data collection. Interesting. The prognosticator doesn't have a prophecy for you. More proof that it uses what it knows to make calculated guesses. But it predicted doom and gloom for me. Now I can change my future and show everyone that our fate isn't fixed. By doing the impossible, I'll find the lost treasure of the Radius. In the past, the pilgrimage included both a visit to the Prognosticator and a search for the treasure. That changed after a lot of people died during an unsuccessful hunt. Talbatton survived that doomed hunt. I'll get him to tell me exactly what happened. Then, I can retrace their steps, avoid their mistakes, and find enough wealth to change my fortune. Let's go find the old man in the Brass Fortress.
you sure about this, Comet? Remember what happened to your mother. With the Outsider's help, that treasure is as good as mine. Then everyone will see that the Prognosticator is a fraud! When I asked you to help Comet, this wasn't exactly what I had in mind. I want to see our people abandon the reckless pilgrimage to the Grand Prognosticator. But going after the treasure is just as dangerous, maybe even more so. Carmid seeks to replace one foolish pilgrimage with another. Very well. I can tell you that the treasure exists. I've seen the wreckage of the merchant caravan myself. But getting close enough to recover it? Impossible. Because of the massive fabric that prowls the area. Here, Grinder is bigger than three brawny Nords and a hundred times more dangerous. It slaughtered the pilgrims that attempted to recover the treasure. I was the only survivor. I'm still uncomfortable with all this, but I can see that you and Kamid are determined. The wreckage lies scattered far to the south, near the mountains that form the southern border of the radius. Gear Grinder is a killer. Please keep Kamid safe. Before you go, Kamid mentioned you found Malia's journal. He said it contained a passphrase and mentioned Sotha Seal's honored assistant. Is that true? I'm sorry to say that when I was a young man, I came across a sequence plaque that belonged to one of Sotha Seal's original assistants, an apostle called Albacron. The plaque contained a series of passphrases. That's how I found the lost treasure. They allowed me to change the nature of my pilgrimage. I was able to get the prognosticator to tell me how to locate the lost treasure of the Radius, thus altering my future. Or so I hoped. But the Fabricant. Maybe our fates are set after all. I'm not sure how I feel, not anymore. But I didn't give Malia the passphrase. She must have found the plaque where I hid it. Maybe if she hadn't. When you return from the wreckage, if you return, I'll tell you more about the passphrases.
creature. It's even worse than Palbatan told us. Look, I appreciate all the help, but I don't want to see you die on my behalf. Are you sure you can deal with that beast? I'm no warrior, you know that. Without you, we wouldn't have gotten this far. I'll stay out of the way, so don't worry about me. Just be safe out there and try not to die. You did it! Thanks to you, we found the lost treasure. This proves the prognosticator isn't an oracle. It's just a machine. Not a very good one at that. Now I can show the people of Slagtown that we're not prisoners to destiny. Yes, my friend, spices. Wonderful, delicious spices. That's the most valuable treasure of all, when your diet consists of nothing but flavorless paste. This will not only improve our lives, it will show my people that our fate is not set in stone. More than that, spices are as rare as a blade of grass in a city of metal. Wealthy mages and apostles will pay dearly for such a tempting treat. But I need to be cautious. Others will try to steal this treasure. I need to hide it to keep it safe. Return to Slagtown and meet me there. Then we can show my people how we changed the outcome of the prognosticator's prediction and improved my destiny. I just wish my mother had lived to see this day. a few people together so I can tell them what we've done. Hopefully, word will then spread throughout Slagtown and all of the Brass Fortress. Palbatan and I talked about my mother. We don't think she saw the prediction from the Oracle. We think she was out there trying to do the same thing as me. She was trying to figure out how the prognosticator works so she could get it to change our fortunes. Palbatan believes she acquired the passphrase from the sequence plaque he hid away. That's our best guess. She was trying to help us, all of us. I just wish she had told me that she hadn't tried to do it on her own. Well, thanks to you, I succeeded where she failed. Now we just have to convince the rest of Slagtown. Art, that's not something you hear a lot about in a place that runs on gears and cogs. Here, this is your share of the treasure. You earned it. Oh, and Palbatan wants you to meet him in the Outlaw's Refuge afterward. He has something for you, too. People of Slagtown, I bring you a revelation. The prognosticator lies. 
But we can change our fortunes. We have free will. A coin to caution you in my prayers? The apostles say there's no such thing as free will. What you're implying is heresy, Comet. Is it hearsay to speak the truth? I performed the pilgrimage. I received the usual grim fortune that predicted I'd be poor until I died. But that future is a false future. I refused to accept that fate, and I changed it. And if I can do it, so can you. Oh, really? You look just as destitute as you did yesterday, Comet. Maybe even more so. I found the lost treasure of the Radius. I made a deal to sell some of the spices, and this is the contract. I'm rich! So we can change our fate? Yeah. The future isn't a set sequence? We have to tell everyone. Come and change the future. The prognosticator was wrong. <laughs> <laughs>